hilarious than original. A range of complaints were made against my assertions that Digibro's videos had a real effect on SAO's perception, its mouse score specifically, with people claiming that the drop-in score was actually just part of a natural process of decay that most anime, especially popular ones, tend to experience. Well, in the interests of being thorough, defending my arguments, and giving some respect to those not invalid concerns, I've decided to crunch the numbers. The potential views are a nice plus, of course, but frankly I've got bigger projects in the works currently, so I can assure you that delaying them to make this was done only with those pure intentions I laid out in mind. To address potential objections right off the bat, I am using mal review scores in order to track changes in opinion towards the series over time. While my anime list of course doesn't represent the anime fandom perfectly, it is a fairly reliable look into what shows are being watched the most and the general attitudes held towards them. More importantly, any demographical bias the Mal user base may have will be towards those anime fans who use the internet, and are at least somewhat involved in anime on the internet. So these are the people most likely to be posting in forums, reddit threads, and youtube comments anyway. As such, I find no issue with using these numbers to derive a general trend of how those engaged in the SAO discourse viewed the series. Let me make the point I made in part 1 by noting that nearly as many people have seen Digibro's analytical diatribe as have listed SAO on MAL, and while those groups will not align one to one, the type of person who would watch an hour-long SAO video on YouTube is fairly likely to be the same type of person to maintain a MAL account, so the idea that a video of his could affect the MAL score is not at all far-fetched. The first 150 MAL reviews of SAO to be made after it finished airing average out to 7.35. Now this may jump out to you as a good deal lower than what the score initially was, and even is today, and that's simply due to there being a greater tendency for those who disliked it to want to voice their opinions. But this number is still useful because we can observe the trend of how it changed to observe the shift in general attitude towards the series. I don't have access to all of the scores themselves, but this will still give us a good view of how those things changed. These first 150 reviews were made in a roughly three and a half month period, from when SAO ended in late December 2012 to the beginning of April 2013. This is where the hype seems to have died down a bit, and the usual drop in score you'd expect took place. I took a peek at how things went after that, and over the course of 50 additional reviews, encompassing a period of time of two months, the average score dropped to 6.66, putting us in early June of 2013. I then went to the date Digibro's first SAO video came out, June 3rd of 2014, and looked at both the 150 reviews directly preceding it and the 150 directly following it, to determine if there had been a change. Because the rate of reviews had slowed down, the 150 reviews preceding his video stretched all the way back to October of 2013, an 8 month period. The average score? 6.6. .6. That's right. There was only a 0 0.06 drop in SAO's average score during this time frame when compared to the two month time frame following SAO's initial period of hype. As I said in the previous parts of this, Digibro's video came out over a year and a half after Sword Art Online wrapped up. Its score had already settled into the general range where community opinion of it stood. Let's now look at the 150 reviews that followed his video. The rate at which reviews were being made got a slight bump, but it still took around 7 months to get that 150 reviews that's my standard here. The average score dropped down to 6.18, as opposed to that 6.6 .6 it had been for the previous set of 150 reviews. Q victory theme. Really though, I don't resent the more reasonable skepticism of some of the conclusions I drew in the previous videos, as they were based upon a combination of general knowledge about the way these things tend to go and plain old intuition, but now that I've laid out the numbers, it should be plain to see. From April to June 2013, the average score given to SAO was 6.66. From October 2013 to June 2014, the average score given was 6.6. .6. Then, from June 2014 to January 2015, the average score was 6.18. The general view of SAO's quality experienced the usual drop a few months after it finished airing, settled down into how the community generally viewed it following that, experiencing the slow decay and score you'd expect, and then got knocked down a peg following Digibro's viral demonstration of some of its flaws. Even then, this isn't a massive shift, but it is actually an important one because as it was, SAO was balanced on a razor's edge. The general view of SAO expressed before Digi's video was, lots of flaws but generally fun. All it took was the addition of a few more flaws to tip those scales, and make them too numerous to make suffering through the perceived bullshit worthwhile. This is apparently all it took for SAO to go from The ride down was to some degree highly enjoyable, 
if for no other reason than to just watch the continual supply of fail. Very pretty fail, I might add, with a soundtrack by Yuki Kajura and everything. Plus, I honestly believe that the early episode handled that death aspect of the setting really well, and it was a shame that they dropped the impact of the topic so quickly. Also, for the most part, the ending of the whole show, well, well, it was somewhat satisfying, which is more than I can say for other shows, and hell, I always say that the ending is paramount, and it could have ended a lot worse, so major props there. Two. In that Sword Art Online is a beautiful looking, wonderfully sounding series with a story that doesn't know where it's going and characters so uninteresting and unrelatable that I would rather sit down and read the Harry Potter fan fiction, My Immortal. Pro tip, don't Google that. You'll thank me later. I'm just trying to verbalize my displeasure. My Immortal isn't worth the clicks. Suffice it to say that I didn't really like it a whole lot and the prospect of watching more didn't really appeal to me. Or at the very least, all it took for some reviewers to be comfortable expressing the latter sentiments without fear of upsetting the masses too greatly. So it really is noteworthy. They didn't pay for this video, what with it just being an addendum and all. But a big thank you as always to my patrons for affording me the opportunity to spend a day making Excel spreadsheets to set the record straight. Matchbox Matt, Teencho37, Bill, Sam, Izumi69, Darian De Sotel, Joji Matthews, Culver James Kamai, Chris Wagner, and all the rest of them.